Moving on to the next example, we have a 60 liter water tank that has a leak and after t minutes the remaining volume is modeled by vt is equal to 60 bracket 1 minus t over 30 squared where t is between 0 and 30 minutes. How fast is the water leaking when the tank is 25% full? And the fact that they're asking you how fast something is changing you can be pretty sure that they're asking for a rate of change and they are asking for a rate of change in this specific question. Now rate of change as we know can either be an instantaneous rate of change or an average rate of change. And if you reread this again, how fast is the water leaking when the tank is 25% full? Well, they're asking for how fast the water is leaking at a specific point in time, not between two points in time. So the fact that it's at a specific point in time when the tank is 25% full, they're asking for the instantaneous rate of change. Now we know that the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a certain point in time is the same as the slope of a tangent of that function at that same point in time. So the fact that they're asking how fast the water is leaking, they want to know how fast is the volume changing when the tank is 25% full. So we're going to have to find the slope of the tangent on this function when the tank is 25% full. Now if we take this function here and graph it, it's going to look like this. It's actually going to be a parabola that opens up where the dependent variable is the volume and the independent variable is the time in minutes. But notice how this function is only defined for a time between 0 and 30 minutes. So the vertex of this parabola, if you do graph it, it actually happens at a t-intercept of 30, but it's only defined up to that t-value of 30. So this portion of the parabola we would not draw in this specific question because the t-value is only defined for that interval. So the tank starts off full at 60 liters. If we plug in zero for T, we would get a volume of 60. And then it gradually decreases to a volume of zero at 30 minutes. So at 30 minutes, the tank is completely empty. Now the question is asking us how fast is the water leaking when the tank is 25% full? So we already established that we have to find the slope of the tangent of this function when the tank is 25% full. But what does a 25% full tank really mean? Well, the full tank is 60 liters, so when it's 25% full, 25% of 60 is 15 liters. So 30 liters is about here, so then 15 would be halfway between 0 and 30. So that's about there. So if we draw a tangent, which I drew here in blue, at a volume of 15, we have to find the slope of that tangent at a volume of 15 liters. And that would give us the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change, when the tank is 25% full. So to find the slope of a tangent for this function, we have to find its derivative. Because once we have its derivative, we can find the slope of this tangent at that specific point in time. So if we rewrite the function vt equals 60 bracket 1 minus t over 30 squared, we now have to find the derivative of this. So there are a couple of ways to find this derivative. Number one, you can realize that this function is two separate functions multiplied by each other, this 60 here and then this 1 minus t over 30 squared. So you can use the product rule. That's one option. However, an easier way is to use the constant multiple rule that we've introduced previously in the curriculum. So when we have a function that is a constant times another function, well then the derivative of that original function is just going to be the constant times the derivative of that inner function. So notice how this 60 here is a constant. So really all we have to find is the derivative of this function here, this part, and then multiply the 60 back in after. So then to find the derivative, we would just keep the 60 as is, and now we're gonna find the derivative of this function in the red square brackets. And before we do that, I wanna take this t over 30, and I wanna rewrite it as one over 30 t, because it's gonna make 
everything a lot smoother to work with. So T over 30 is the same as 1 over 30 T. Whenever you get something like that, you always want to separate the variable from that constant. And in this case, the uh, constant is a fraction because 1 over 30 times T would just give us T over 30, which is what we're given originally. So now to find the derivative of this, we have to apply the power of a function rule because notice how it's a function to the power of a real number. So the way we do that is we bring that exponent down. So that would be 2. We rewrite the inner function as it is. So that's 1 minus 1 over 30t. We subtract 1 from the exponent. So 2 minus 1 is just 1. And then we have to take the derivative of that function that is being taken to the power of that real number. So this is why I rewrote this function as 1 over 30t because it's easier to take the derivative of that inner function now. So the derivative of 1 is just 0 and then the derivative of negative 1 over 30t is just that constant of negative 1 over 30. However, if we were to try to take the derivative of this inner function in this format, 1 minus t over 30, it may not be as obvious that there's just a constant in front of the t. So we might have got confused there. But the fact that we rewrote it as 1 minus 1 over 30t, when we take the derivative of that inner function when we're doing the power of a function rule, it's easy to see that the derivative of that negative 1 over 30t part the t is just going to go away and we're just left with that constant of negative 1 over 30. So then if we simplify this more, we can take the 60, the 2, and the negative 1 over 30 and then multiply all three of those together and we would get negative 4 if we do so. Then this bracket 1 minus 1 over 30t, that just stays as is and then we can just distribute that negative 4 inside the bracket. So we would end up with this final derivative here of 2 over 15 t minus 4. So that represents the derivative of this original function right there. Now notice how this derivative here is in terms of t. So this derivative will give us the slope of the tangent of this function at any time value t. However, we want the slope of this function when the volume is 15 liters. So we don't know the time at which that volume is hitting that 15 liter mark. So we need to solve for the time at which the volume is 15 liters and then we can plug in that time into the derivative to find the slope of the tangent at that specific t value. So our second step is we have to solve for t when the volume is equal to 15 liters. So we just take our original function and make it equal to 15 and then solve for t. So to do that, we would divide both sides by 60 to get rid of this 60 here on the right side. And then we get 1 over 4 left on the left side. Then we square root both sides. We get 1 half on the left side. The bracket goes away. And then when we solve for that t, we get 15 minutes. Now, this 15 minutes and this 15 liters, that's just a coincidence that those numbers are the same. It's just because of this function. Usually, that's not going to happen. So don't get confused by that. So at a time of 15 minutes, the tank reaches a volume of 15 liters. And now we can find the instantaneous rate of change when the tank is 25% full because the tank is 25% full or it's 15 liters full at a time of 15 minutes. And now we can just plug in that T value of 15 minutes into the derivative to find that slope of the tangent or to find that rate of change. So that represents our third and final step. We plug in that t value of 15 into the derivative and then when we do so, we would get negative two liters per second. So don't forget your units either because it's a rate of change question. So how fast is the water leaking when the tank is 25% full? it's leaking at a rate of negative two liters per second at that specific point in time. That's the instantaneous rate of change. So the trick of this question was to realize that the derivative is in terms of time and they asked us how fast is the water leaking when the tank is 25% full. So they asked it in terms of volume. So they told you when the volume is 25% full. 
So a 25% full volume means that it's 15 liters because it's a 60 liter tank. And then we have to find the time when we reach that 15 liter mark. So then we solve for the time, we get 15 minutes, and then we take that time and plug it into the derivative to find the instantaneous rate of change at that specific point in time. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.